future Lexus and future Haley. It's me, past Becky, and I'm here in your past saying hello to past, present, and future versions of you. Because the past you is the one right now as I'm making this video, the present you is the one who's watching it right now, and the future you is all the yous that will watch this video in the future. And I'm saying hello to all of them right now at this singular point in time. And if that hurts your head, then just don't watch this again and you won't have to worry about it. So from that you may have guessed that my topic is going to be the future, which is awesome. So I'm going to be talking about like technology and future stuff and inventing and ideas and and really cool stuff. Not Doctor Who too much, I swear. But as any good historian knows, <coughs> Alexis, <coughs> before we talk about the future we have to first look into the past. Do all historians know that or is that something I just made up? I'm not sure, but it sounds cool anyways. So basically I'm going to explain a little bit about my past and why it's brought me to where I am today and from there we can go on to talking about the future of the world and technology and inventions and really cool stuff. Okay, so first item about the past, your Mario video number 17. I resent that you thought I didn't know Highway to Hell because I'm obsessed with Supernatural, so. But I have heard it before Super- I, maybe I didn't. I don't know. I'm gonna try not to lie in these. Also, Haley, thank you for reminding me of the vomiting noise. I haven't watched Toby in a while, and it's been too long since I've seen you guys, and so I'd forgotten it. Anyway, about my past. Um, my junior year of high school, I was in AP Environmental Science, and that was when I really decided that I want to work with clean energy and developing clean technologies, pioneering the future in a sustainable way. Since then, I've been trying to figure out how exactly I'm supposed to do that. Am I supposed to get a degree in engineering? Am I supposed to go into environmental studies or environmental science? I started out in chemical engineering and then went to physics, actually, uh, and then thought, no, environmental studies would be perfect, um, and so I like dropped out of Wazoo. Um, and now I'm thinking, nope, I want to do environmental engineering. And so I'm taking a couple pointless online classes right now. In the summer, I'll be going to Bellevue College, and I'll get an associate degree in environmental engineering, well, engineering, and then who knows from there. But I think the future's looking pretty good. So, yeah. But in these videos, I'm going to talk about, like, kind of ideas I have and new technologies that are out there today, and possibilities for the future. I don't know, we'll see where it goes, but I think it's gonna be really fun. Okay, so we can start with the future stuff a bit today, maybe. Anyway, I just sent my paper and it was about population. Hey, we'll start in the past. Thomas Malthus, 200 years ago, thought that the world would starve because as long as conditions were good, population would continue to increase. And eventually it would only be starvation that would stop that. And so the human population like would be oscillating between starvation and, you know, moderate happiness. But that's actually not going to happen because it was actually in 1970 that the rate of population growth peaked, and since then the rate has been declining, even though today population growth itself is at the highest it's ever been, but that's just because we have more people than we've ever had before. The rate is decreasing, and that's going to continue as long as countries continue to develop. And so right now developed countries have to help impoverished countries develop because that will stop the demographic trap because poor countries have a lot of children because they have a really high death rate. And if we lower the death rate with things like better nutrition and health care, then families won't need to have as many children to make up for the possible deaths. Also, if we give them education, or make education mandatory, then the cost of raising each child increases, and so they have fewer children. And when those countries develop and move away from subsistence agriculture, then children won't be as valuable for things like fetching water and wood and helping on the farm. And also, if we start to educate women in those countries, then women are more empowered to make their own decisions about how many children they want, and also get a job, um, which means they won't have to stay at home raising children, they can actually make money for themselves. So in every way, developing these countries is highly necessary. So that's what I've been writing about, but there's also another issue about how are we going to feed this many people, and maybe I can get into that in the next video. I don't know. This isn't really, like, what I'm supposed to talk about, but... You know, maybe we can do some stuff on genetic engineering next video. I don't know. It'll be cool. Also, Alexis, in response to your video, uh, I think you can do the hat drawing book thing whenever you want, and yeah, that'll be cool. And you may have noticed that all my books are set in the future. Hey, so sticking to my theme. That's fun. Signing off. <laughs>